All right, welcome back everybody. When we left off, everything was just awful. Paige and Chris have gotten married at first sight, and within just a few days, Chris has made them go through all of the motions of a toxic relationship. And just when she thought she had had enough, she walked back into their hotel room and the dude was sitting on a table. You know, that that can't be any good. You could tell that he's got some bad news because he's on a table. You know, the worse the news, the weirder the spot that he's gonna sit. There has already been a clear cycle or pattern, if you will. Chris basically wanders off somewhere and Paige is like, where did he go? And then she finds him like crying crying in a random room, sometimes somebody else's room. It's pretty clear from the start that Chris is a bit dramatic, but it does somewhat make sense considering this dude has more baggage than the end of Toy Story 2. As if things haven't been bad enough up until this point, Chris is about to drop some pretty devastating news. Just watch and see how a mature married man handles a serious discussion with his wife. Yeah, I found out some information this morning, and it is, I won't say devastating, but it is something that I have to deal with. What? It doesn't matter. What? It doesn't matter. There you go. Perfect communication. Are you taking notes, everybody? Listen, babe, there's something I gotta tell you. Even though I know we've only been married for like a day and a half, I somehow already have huge, devastating news. I mean, it's bad. I was so stressed out over this, I had to sit up on a table. Did you, did you see me over there? Or was that a desk, would you say? It's one of those weird half-desk, half-table hotel things going. What is the news? You said you have devastating news. Oh, that? Ugh. Oh, it's not even important. It doesn't even matter. Did I say devastating? I meant devastatingly unimportant. Devastatingly insignificant. That's, that's, the kind of news I have. If it isn't clear by this point, this relationship is absolutely doomed, but that doesn't mean that Chris isn't going to stretch this on for another nine episodes. He has quite a knack for acting like a seven-year-old, and I, I would say that his natural place is on a reality TV show. This is where he belongs. This is where he thrives. Some people were simply just born to be on reality TV. Darcy is one of those people. She was born to be filmed by a camera crew getting her shoe stuck in an airport escalator. Anyway, before I get carried away here, let's just quickly talk about today's sponsor, Scentbird. Like everyone else, I take pride in my appearance occasionally. But I'm personally not the biggest fan of shopping, and I also tend to be incredibly indecisive. And that's why I was lucky to find Scentbird, which is without a doubt the best way to build a collection of fragrances, colognes, or perfumes. Their selection is impressive and extensive, and it's a great way to try out different designer brands without having to spend a ridiculous amount of money for an at best marginally bigger bottle. I mean, there's roughly a hundred sprays in each of these bottles, so it's gonna last you until the next month. Unless you're some kind of fragrance maniac and you just go nuts with it, in that case it, it might not last until the next month, but you know, if that's if that's what you want to do, go for it. The bottles will come in these atomizer cases, which are really nice because you can lock them. And if you want to open it up, you just look at this little tab on the bottom and, and uh, flip it open. My favorite one that I've received recently is this one right here. And no, it's not just because it's called Boozy Patchouli, although that's part of it. I mean, come on. To me, it has a very earthy smell. You know, the patchouli comes through. Is it? I think that's how you say it, patchouli. Am I saying that right? I like that word. The rose and citrusy smell are also very noticeable, but as usual, nothing is overpowering. Even though I prefer some over for others, I have yet to receive anything that I didn't like. If you want to get started on your monthly supply, head on over to Scentbird.com and use coupon code TQS55 for 55% off your first month. Again, that's code TQS55 for 55% off your first month. Anyway, let's check back in on Chris and Paige. Let's see, uh, let's see if they're enjoying their honeymoon. So what was going on? Yes, the devastating news. It clearly matters if, it's, if you're saying it's devastating. It's not devastating, but it is surprising, to say the least and it is rough to deal with, so I have to deal with it on I'm, I'm not saying that I'm lost. All right, what are you not understanding? What is so unclear about this? It's devastating news, but also it's not that bad. But also, it could ruin our lives. Also, I'm not even sure if I should tell you this because you don't even need to worry about it. Explain to me what's unclear about that. I am begging you. You found out some news? It doesn't matter anymore. What time do you want to head to the pool? What's wrong? This is insane. So he says that he has devastating news, but doesn't tell her the news, and then he tries to change the subject and then pretends like it didn't happen. The cherry on top is him asking what's wrong. W were you just there? If you don't want to share with your wife what's troubling you, uh -uh. and how it affects our marriage. Just leave it alone, I won't bring it up again. Honestly, I'm kind of just here for the food, you know, pop in, quick marriage, get something to eat, quick divorce, I'm out. No, I'm like really serious. You just said there was some devastating news and you don't want to tell me. I'm good. It's not about you. <laughs> like, this is about us. I'm not saying I'm good. See, it's all good. He's good. You're good with what? Because I'm not. Okay, so I'm good with not telling you. 
I honestly don't know how she has the patience to even have a conversation with this guy. He's not even addressing or responding to anything that she's saying, he's just repeating himself over and over. He genuinely couldn't care less how this affects her and is only concerned about his image or how difficult the conversation for him is going to be. That's problematic for me. You're in a marriage. You don't keep secrets that affect our marriage. What is going on? I just told you. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> There you go. Does that, does that explain everything? You good now? I think this is about as poorly as you can communicate with somebody, and it's actually quite impressive. He, he messed this up at every step of the way. How's your food? It's good. How was your outlet? Terrible. I hate it's my good. life. It's actually pretty fascinating that they've only known each other for a day and a half, and yet they have the dynamic of an old married couple that hates each other and refuses to get divorced. So after this, they both go out in the hall, and Chris runs over to the camera crew like they're gonna bail him out or support him or something. He's like, I don't want to tell her. Please, don't make me do it. I thought he was gonna hide behind them. I don't want to tell her. I don't want to do that. It's gonna affect your marriage. You can't keep that to yourself. I get that. I don't want to tell her. Look, I know I'm a married man now and I have responsibilities and I really need to step up, but I just have one favor to ask. Can you let me know if she comes around the corner because I'm going to hide behind this curtain? This is literally making me sick to my stomach. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make you sick at all. I promise. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to make you sick to your stomach at all. That was not my intention. I was more just trying to be annoying and give you a headache or something. You want to talk about it? <laughs> yeah. Um, what is going on here? She went from kind of curious to just terrified in a matter of seconds. As always, of course, he needs to be super extra, so he brings her in the bathroom and, like, turns on the fan and the, in the shower and everything so to drown out the sound so he can tell her this news that we're gonna find out directly after anyway. Wait, is he actually just taking a shower? Imagine if he just kicked her out of the bathroom. God, I'm taking a shower. A little privacy here. What are you doing following me in here? Before I tell you devastating news, I need to calm my nerves and take a shower, all right? Perhaps you could grab me a soda. What do you think I'm just gonna tell you this news for free? You're gonna have to cough something up of equal value. What's, what's this news worth to you, huh? This is just so ridiculously over the top, and I think this guy enjoys dragging these kinds of things out because there's more attention on him. He's turning on the fan, he's turning on the shower, he's turning on the bath, he's flushing the toilet, he's blasting the bidet. It's about to beat it. Does it work? So clean. Clean my ass. Whether you tell her this information or not, she's gonna dislike you. There's really nothing you can do about it. It's inevitable. In his mind, this is like his version of Edward telling Bella that he was a vampire, except here, he's just telling Paige that his ex is pregnant with his kid. Super classy, super romantic. Isn't this who you isn't this the guy you asked for i honestly don't know if i can move forward from this so i need some time to think about all this i don't know where to go from here i don't know what i'm gonna do divorce what what, what did you just say so you'd think this would be over now, right? I mean, he just told her that his ex-fiance is pregnant with his child. But the thing is, Chris does occasionally know how to say the right thing at the right time, and he's able to reel her back in with false promises. I mean, I hate to admit it, but the dude's got game. Watch him win her over right here. He, it's spectacular. You look nice tonight. Boom. See? Right there. That's how you win a girl over. You give her the most unenthusiastic compliment of all time at a borderline whisper and then just fall asleep. So your mom? No, I'm gonna let you lead this today. I've already said everything that I can say. Chris talks as if he speaks quietly enough, no one will be able to hear his bullshit. I love how she tells him to lead, but he has literally nothing to say, and that's pretty much the result you're gonna get every time you ask him that question. He has nothing to say because he is really, truly not interested in how she's feeling or reacting to this situation. And it's crazy because all the other couples at this point are just bonding and getting to know each other and talking about their hobbies and interests and stuff like that. Because at this point, you shouldn't know each other well enough to even dislike each other. The fact that this guy made himself so unlikable so quickly is astonishing. He basically rolled up and was like, hi Paige, I'm your husband, uh, here's this cool tattoo I got to cover up my ex-fiance's name, who is also six weeks pregnant with my child and I'm still in love with her. So, are there any questions you have for me? You know, are you confused about anything? Otherwise, we should just, uh, get to know each other. 
I, I never got any feedback or anything, so I don't know what was on your mind. To be honest, I'm confused. What are you confused about? Imagine asking that after all that has happened. I'd be like, dude, everything, everything you've done since I met you is confusing. I also find it crazy that he's kind of putting it on her. He's like, well, you haven't given me any feedback, so I don't, how am I supposed to know how you're feeling? Dude, anybody would feel like shit if you told them all this information. It's common sense, dude. Like if you kick somebody in the head, you don't walk up to him like, I, I, I wasn't sure how that affected you. Are you hurt by that? Yes, I'm hurt. You kicked me in the head, dumbass. And how are you supposed to even give feedback to this guy? He doesn't even take in information. It doesn't go into his head. So, do you know, like, how far along she is? Six weeks. So, when was the last time that y'all were interacting? Six weeks. Just an FYI, six weeks ago, Chris was already in the process of signing up for the show, so he knew he was going to get married at first sight. And this is when it becomes kind of clear that Chris was likely doing this as a weird way to move on, you know, to get married really quickly, or as a way to rub it in his ex's face. I think that's probably more likely. So her, um, her dad had passed, and uh, I went and paid my respects to him. Even though me and her wasn't on good terms, we were intimate um, during that time. So obviously it's really sad and horrible that his ex's father died, but I think he's using that information to soften the blow, to be like, well, it was an emotionally difficult time for her and that's why we were intimate. Not that that's necessarily untrue, but something tells me that wasn't the only time. And part of the reason I say that is because he didn't get his tattoo of her name covered up until like the day before the wedding. If he was broken up with his ex and they didn't talk for six weeks and he knew he was going to be getting married soon, why wouldn't he get that tattoo covered up sooner unless maybe he was still leading on his ex? I mean, she's just been stressed out, I guess. But my main concern was you. I mean, I owe you um, an apology for probably the roughest first week to a relationship you probably ever had. Hey, don't get too excited. I didn't say I'm going to apologize. I said I probably owe you an apology. And I meant that, you know? I probably do. But I'm just not really like an apology kind of person. It's just not my thing, you know? Anyway, are we gonna order some crab rangoons or something? Because I didn't come on this honeymoon for nothing. You deserve way better than what was dished out to you. And I'm gonna ask my husband, I'll, I'll Wait, what did he say? want I didn't, to I did work stuff out, that. but I want to hear from you and hear what you want to say, what you have to say. So he tells her that she deserves better, and he's gonna prove that to her by treating her like garbage instead of treating her like crap. If today was decision day, what would you say? What are you fucking nuts? What are you nuts? And I'll say this as well, you are an amazing, smart, intelligent black woman, and the experts did a great job of matching you with myself. Aw, it's so sweet. How cute. This is really stupid and an obvious lie because he makes zero effort whatsoever to get to know her even after this. In fact, I would say it gets worse. It's weird that he's even telling her this if he has no intention of continuing this relationship. What is he gonna get out of this, you know? So in Chris's mind, when he says that his wife deserves better, I guess that means go out and buy your ex-fiance a car because that's, that's something he actually does. Anyway, in this next scene, he breaks the news to the rest of the couples on this show because part of the deal is they all hang out with each other while they're on the honeymoon yeah so i found out some disturbing news today <laughs> it's not disturbing that's let's use another word no. okay so surprising news today yeah. all right not off to a good start he described finding out he's having a baby as disturbing they're gonna expect something horrible now and i guess it is horrible in the sense that he's now dragging Paige through all this crap but i don't even think that's how he means it i was engaged uh and uh my ex-fiance uh, is pregnant I love how everyone's just simultaneously like, yeah, can we go back to not talking about that, please? And it's especially uncomfortable because you can't be that honest in front of him. You know, you're going to have to still pretend to be supportive, even though everybody is internally like, dude, this guy is crazy. And we're hoping that this is everything that God has planned for you. And you know, we're behind you. Yeah, absolutely. No Whatever you need. 10%. 10%. Whatever you need. We got 10 you. 10 on it. Everybody seems to be supportive, but everybody's more so supportive of Paige. I mean, she's going through a lot, so I get it, but... I don't really feel like people were supporting us in our marriage. Why would they? Why would anyone be supportive of you in this situation? It, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I, I don't think you've done a single thing correctly. When I first watched this, I knew he was going to do that. I knew once they were all really supportive of her, he was going to be like, why aren't they supporting me? I mean, realistically, what are you even going to say? Like, congratulations on, on getting married while you were hooking up with your ex still? So anyway, things kind of get better for a little. They patch things up and Chris whispers something about wanting to do better and, you know, making sure he's there 
there for his wife. Then they start to talk about if they're actually going to move into the apartment after the honeymoon, and she brings up the fact that she has a dog. What are you thinking about? Um, I'm thinking like, when we get back to Atlanta, like things will definitely be different. You'll have to meet Finley. Do you like your dogs to sleep on the bed? Hell no. Are you gonna be comfortable taking them out in the morning? I ain't so hot. You take care of it, I'll play with it. Look, I know I just told you I'm having a kid, but a dog? Are you crazy? Oh, I'll just take care of everything. Chris will just take care of everything all the time. That's fair. I was very clear that my tolerance is zero with dogs. I said, if anything, I'm comfortable with Nintendo dogs, and that's about it. Are you serious right now? I'm telling you that I'm okay with being a bonus parent to, you know, your child. You're just like, oh, well, you know, we can coexist with Bentley, but I'm not gonna be going out my way or whatever. Look, you just tell Bentley to mind his business and stay out of my way and we're good, you know? Cause I'm, I'm not cool with him talking shit. Is your dog one of those dogs that just kind of sleeps and eats and poops and goes for walks? Cause I, I don't put up with that, you know? I don't put up with laziness. He's getting a job. You're making me nervous about even wanting to bring him because I don't want it to be a problem. As long as he's not biting up my, my shoes and my clothes. Oh, no. The moment you do that, why do I have a feeling that it's about to become this scene, but with a dog instead? So anyway, next, things get very heated when Chris is confronted by two of the other women on the show who are not his biggest fan. From my, or our point of view, you know, we just want to have her back. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just a little concerned because the whole time we've been in Vegas, she's shut down. Nobody on here can relate to, you know what I'm saying, my and nobody can relate to Paige's and I don't appreciate the fake concern from you or your you husband. Think we're not fake fake. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm just saying it's, it's fake, fake concern. Of course, a fake person would assume that somebody else having some kind of concern or emotion over a situation would be faking it as well. Believe it or not, there are people out there who will make decisions based on empathy and concern for others and not just how they want to look in the situation. In my opinion, Chris only seems to say something nice when he has something to gain out of the situation or to benefit from it. Fake concern, <laughs> okay. particularly from you and Eric, and I'll tell him that as well. Well, I can promise you none of it's fake concern. concern I'm not necessarily concerned about you, I'm concerned about Paige. Right. Okay, and I don't owe you a explanation. It's true, he doesn't necessarily owe them an explanation, but of course he has to be insanely rude, and I would say there's really no point in them even talking to him. You're not gonna get through to this guy at all. If you were my husband, and you just found out you had a kid, and we just got married, and you weren't going above and, you, and, and beyond and you, to fix but the you, situation. You, you don't know if I'm going above and it beyond. It doesn't sound like you are from talking to her. Damn it, she tattled on me? Are you kidding me? I thought we were married here. I thought this was a marriage full of trust and love. Is he really trying to argue that he's been going above and beyond? I mean, he hasn't even been doing the bare minimum. He hasn't even been scraping by. Going over and beyond is what I f did, telling her that I had a f kid. That's going above and beyond? That's going above and beyond. Because that, that is f embarrassing. Oh my God. <laughs> Well, it's, I mean, it, yeah, it's true. So just telling her that he's having a kid is going above and beyond. That, what is he talking about? And he didn't just come out and tell her. It was a pain in the ass. First, he brought it up and then said it didn't matter and he didn't want to talk about it. And he ran away and hid behind the camera crew. That's going above and beyond. Hiding from your wife because you're too afraid to tell her. You know, is that just step one? Well, of course, the first thing is you're going to be scared and run away and hide. That's just a given. I mean, that's part of going above and beyond. Right, but that's your definition of going above and beyond to make someone feel wanted and loved in a relationship? That's, that's one aspect of it but like i said he is quite literally saying that doing far less than the bare minimum is going above and beyond man i can't even imagine what it'd be like if he thought he actually messed up what what would he have to do for that to happen so say on my business simple as that okay yeah well that, that that's that's right. arrogant i'm done you are, you are very arrogant, actually. Okay. <laughs> and I think we are going to end on that note. So, what is the verdict? What's everybody think? Did Chris go above and beyond? Is he the perfect husband? Would he be your dream husband? Let me know in the comments what you think, and let me know if you'd like to see more Married at First Sight, or if you want me to go back to 90 Day Fiance, or Love After Lockup. I haven't talked about that in a while. I think there's a new season going on. Also, just want to say thanks again to Semper for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to use coupon code TQS55 for 55% off your first month. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it. It. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you next time. What are you nuts? What are you crazy?